Hello, everyone. Welcome to this on-demand CNCF webinar on whether your Kubernetes is positive or negative. I'm Shauli Rosen, and I'm going to talk about Kubescape, which is the first open source tool for testing whether your Kubernetes is deployed securely according to the best practices and the compliance frameworks, multiple of them, in just one click. Please, um, you know, it is an open source product. We will really love to get your engagement, star us on GitHub, join us on Discord to get all of the updates and get engaged or visit us on our website. Armo is the company behind Cubescape. Just a note about myself, who am I? So I'm Shauli, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Armo. Uh, I'm a software developer, I turned into entrepreneur. And today my life is basically waking up in the morning, 5 a.m. go surfing, 8 a.m. build Kubernetes products, 9 a.m. puts kids to sleep, and then repeat. I do it basically every day, and I kind of like it. So, um, you know, I, I really, really like it, and I really like sharing it with you guys. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to first talk about why do I care and what can Kubernetes do for me? Then we're going to run our first scan. It's going to take less than three minutes. I'm going to show you how to analyze results and get more information and more benefits out of Kubescape. Uh, and the SAS version of it. We're going to talk about adding Kubescape to your CI CD and clusters to get continuous protection. And then once we're done and configuration is all set, now what? How do we take care of the next step of our security? We're going to touch on that just a little bit at the end. So why do I care? Well, good configuration is a big problem. By 2025, it's said that over 99% of the cloud breaches will actually be coming from the root cause of customer uh, misconfigurations. And already today, 59% of the survey respondent uh, in, the, in companies using Kubernetes say that um, detecting misconfiguration is one of the uh, biggest problems that they had in the last 12 months. But it is a big problem, and how do you address it? One of the things that we see from our customers and from our users is you really sometimes don't know where to start. How do I know that I'm doing the right tests? How do I know that my cluster is actually okay? How do I, you know, how do I sleep at night? And first of all, the first answer is you don't. You never know that you're done with misconfigurations, but you have best practices frameworks and guidance that will help you understand where you are and help guide you through what tests you need to check. Um, we specifically in Armo are currently using the Mitre attack framework and the Kubernetes hardening guidance that was issued by the, uh, the NSA. CIS is already uh, coming, but it's also uh, a great uh, framework to use. Um, and we also actually created our own framework, the Armo Best Practices framework uh, that you can use. What Kubescape does for you is takes your cluster or your configuration and compare it against the tests that we've created that match those frameworks. Um, it can be done in the CICD or on a running cluster. And if you choose to do it in the CICD, we are integrated with uh, you know, all of the different CICD tools like Jenkins, GitHub, Azure Pipelines is not here, uh, but we're integrated with it. And it's pretty easy because it's an open source tool. It's also by configuration, it's really, really easy to add it to your pipeline. Just, you know, if we, why Kubescape? And you, know, you could use many tools. I like Kubescape, but I'm very, very biased. But also many of the users in the, in the, in the community like Kubescape. We have uh, over 4.5 stars uh, in, um, in GitHub, and we have a lot of followers, and we get great, great, great feedback from the community on the product. And we actually engage with the community, and we ask you to let us know everything you love, but also everything you don't love about the product and about the project, and we will continuously and make it better and better. Your feedback is super important for us. So we talked a lot. Let's actually do some uh, actual work now and get our first scan going. The best way to go for your first scan is our GitHub page. I recommend going there. Uh, you have the installation scripts there. Everything is readily available. The nice thing about Kubescape is you can really get done in three minutes to, to, to just get started. It requires no in-cluster installation, it only requires a uh, read uh, only privileges uh, from, uh, from your uh, Cube API. So it is very, very easy to get started. 
So with that said, let's go, let's go to our GitHub page. I'm just gonna search for GitHub. GitHub Cubescape. Here we go. And I can see that I can get started with basically running a uh, this command and uh, the curl command. Uh, we got some feedback and I completely get it uh, that people are not very fond of running an install script into their bash. Uh, I agree with you. You can take a look into the SH uh, file. It's all open source and all available for you. Um, I would recommend downloading Cubescape and installing it yourself. Uh, but I've run this so many times, um, and for this demo, I will, specific, will definitely use uh, this one liner. Um, if you ask me, um, you can use it, but of course, always check what you're running in your clusters or in your, on your machines. So I have a cluster already running here, and I'm going to install Cubescape on it. Uh, it's not a cluster, it's a machine. And that's it. I have, Kubernetes, I have Cubescape installed. And now I can actually use it to scan uh, my cluster or my YAMLs. Uh, in this machine, I have access to a running cluster in GCP, which is running the IPSA shop. Um, but I'm actually not going to start by scanning the cluster. I'm actually going to start by scanning the manifest that is actually driving the cluster. I'm going to do it uh, to mimic the CI CD test that we can do on the YAMLs. So let's do that. Let's run Cubescape, scan. And I'm going to use the NSA framework. Framework NSA. And then I'm going to put um, micro services demo. Um, Kubernetes manifests. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the file is in Cubescape demo. I'm sorry for that. Cubescape demo, microservices demo, release, Kubernetes manifest. Yeah, man, I'm going to basically scan that right now. Let's give it a minute. Okay, and we are done. And we have our first scan. I hope uh, it was under three minutes. I think it was. And let's see what we got here. I remind you that we tested a manifest file, a YAML file. So we don't have the entire cluster context. We don't have the control plane. Uh, so many of the tests that you see here are actually not relevant for that uh, specific uh, uh, manifest file. Let's see what is relevant. So let's start with uh, allow privilege escalation, for example. And we can see that we have 12 resources that actually allow privilege escalation in, uh, in the containers, a problem that I should probably fix. Another one that I'm very fond of is the immutable container file system, which we have again, the same, probably the same 12 microservices, which actually allow access uh, and actually allow the container to change the file system of the underlying host, which is very, very much not recommended. So we can see that, and we can actually, if we go up, we can see which uh, resources uh, failed which test. And uh, let me scroll up a bit. So if you go back to our first test of uh, allowing pilot escalations, we can see that the email service check out basically all of the deployments in this namespace uh, are uh, problematic. And we can see the remediation uh, that basically tells you to add the security context and set the flag to false. And we can see more of that uh, in our documentation. So this is how we scan, and we can do it in the CICD. We can scan any YAML file and test it against the best practices of the NSA or the midway. But now let's do the same on an actual running cluster. It can be your development cluster or it can be your dev cluster. All it requires is read uh, privileges. And then we will have many of the tests that were not relevant in this specific file. You know, now they will be relevant. So let's do the same. Uh, my cube CTL is already pointed at uh, the cluster. So all I need to do 
is one Cubescape scan framework and then the, the name of the framework, which is the NSA. Okay, so you can see we have the NSA framework and I'm going to run it now. So now it is running, it uses kubectl to access uh, to the API, the cluster and read all the configurations and test it. Okay, so we see that many of the things that were not relevant before are now uh, suddenly relevant. So for example, things like uh, control plane hardening is now something uh, that is actually uh, testing the three components, things like um, a exposed dashboard, whether we have a dashboard installed uh, is something that is being tested and also exec into containers uh, now has more um, results in it because actually in the cluster, we have roles that can exec into containers. We, in the YAML, we didn't have that, but when you deploy GCP, by default, it creates some administrative uh, role base that actually can uh, exec into containers. And you should probably check that. And again, you can see everything, uh, everything that failed in uh, the actual results in your screen. The next thing that I want to share with you is, okay, you get the results in your screen. It's really nice. It's a report. But how do, how do I automate it? How do I make it part of my CI CD? And that's where it is very convenient to use uh, output formats like JSON or JUnit uh, for, uh, for example, for Jenkins. So this is how we thought about that. And you can run the same test again, and you can put format uh, JSON, for example, and um, output to a file that will be actually uh, running in your CICD. Let's call it uh, test dot JSON, and basically you can now get the results as a JSON file, which can be really, really um, easily integrated into your pipeline. We can actually also point the standard output to JSON, so it will be actually completely automated. So if I'm going to do a VI uh, test, naturally I'm going to see uh, the JSON uh, results file and um, very, very straightforward. Let's get out of that. GCP is actually working a little bit slow today. Okay, so uh, now that we've tested the cluster and we've tested the YAMLs and we know what we can do, let's actually see um, a, a better way or, or an advanced way to actually analyze the results and see in the continuous manner. And this will be done while actually, while actually registering to the SAS part uh, of, of Cubescape. If you run the results, if you run the tests, let's just one more time. Give it a minute. Okay, at the end of the result, you actually have a link uh, to our portal where you can uh, submit the results to the portal and start to get ongoing scans and ongoing uh, results. Uh, and you can have advanced features uh, of what you can do with the system. Um, you don't have to, of course, do it like that. You can just go to portal.almo.cloud and sign up there. I'm already, I'm already registered. So when I will go into this uh, portal right now, I will already get the different clusters that I have scanned. And I can see the trends, in my clusters, I like to, to, to look at it in a list format. And this is the cluster that we just uh, conducted the tests on, the since ACF uh, webinar uh, cluster. Uh, but you can see I have many different clusters here. And let's see what type of results I can see um, if I go into those clusters. So let's start with looking at this cluster that we have here. The way I like to look at things is, first of all, of course, there is the total uh, risk score. And the better uh, my score, uh, the, the better my cluster posture is. And uh, you can see that, of course, right now, everything is the same because all of the tests that I've done are on the same a cluster with the same configuration. The way I like to do things is first to sort the uh, controls by severity and to first of all check the uh, most critical uh, severity and results. Uh, um, 
controls. I can see here that uh, I have privileged containers that I've excluded. This I've done, I've done that before, and um, which basically says that I actually saw privileged containers that I approved to run as privileged. I have uh, application credentials and configuration files. I have five workloads that have that. If I'm going to look at that, I can see that one of them is in the default um, in the default namespace, but the other ones are actually in the control plane namespaces, and we need to see to see if we can fix that. Uh, we can see that we have um, different uh, workloads that have allowed host paths that can actually change the host paths. Let's look at them. Okay, these are in the cube system. Actually, and we have this light bulb here that says, this, can, this is actually okay. Um, there's not much you can do about it. Just, it does it for you. So I will exclude it in order not to get um, re-alerted on that in the future. The exclusion mechanism is very, very powerful. And we are continuously adding more recommendations to do auto exclusion. Because one of the main things you want and we want to do is to reduce the number of alerts that you're getting and only get you into a place where the alerts that you get are really meaningful. Um, if we look at some of the things that we have, let's, let's look at the allow privilege discretion, for example. We can see we have 12 workloads that uh, have uh, been identified that allow privilege escalations. We can see that because of um, the, uh, the uh, recommendation that we got, we excluded cube system, but we have 12 microservices in the default namespace, basically all of them, that actually allow privilege escalation. Okay, what do I do about that? I will go to the documentation and I will see what this test is all about. So we can see that it is about attackers getting access to the container, uplifting the privileges, and we have the remediation here and actually an example of what I should do. So what we see here is that those microservices in the default namespace are missing a security context with the allow privilege escalation flag set to false. By default, it is true. So because we didn't edit, um, we have a misconfiguration, and this is something we need to take care of. Another, um, um, another test that I really like to look at is uh, the uh, host network access. Let's see, host network access. We can see that we have six resources that have failed this. And if I look at them, in this case, it's the cube system, and it tells me, look, you can make an exception. So I'm going to make an exception. Um, but what is this? What does that mean, the host network access? I can, again, go to the um, uh, documentation and see exactly what it means. I hope that makes, uh, that makes sense for you. Now what I want to show you is how, by continuously checking your cluster, we can actually create drift control. So let's take another cluster, which is actually running for a long time now. Let's take this one, for example. OK, you can see that I have many, many tests in this specific cluster. But now I want to show you a different one. Now this one, I have so many clusters running here, so bear with me. Okay, let's take this for example, and let's see if we have drift that we can identify here. Okay. So let's, let's take at the, at the midway framework, for example, we can see always what failed in the latest test versus what failed in the previous test. We basically, basically use the previous test as a benchmark, as a baseline for drift control. And you can set it uh, any way you like. And what you will see is that if you have a drift, we will alert you on it. And in this case, we actually, actually made things better then the last results, we have zero um, microservices that list Kubernetes secrets in, in, in the new deployment. So someone actually fixed this problem. And we have zero uh, service accounts 
that have access to the container uh, um, workloads that have access to the container service account. So this is actually uh, a good drift. Basically, what we want to do is we want to reduce it as much as possible, and then we want to make sure that we don't have any new microservices with um, with that uh, vulnerability. Uh, let's do an example. And let's try to add. Okay, I'm going to do it later. I'm going to show you uh, in the uh, in the CCD and how you do that. Another thing that it is is important to to know that for your organization, you might want to have your own framework. You want you might want to to create uh, your own control and your own uh, framework, and, and we can do that with Kubescape. We do that by going into the settings tab. Here you can see all of your clusters and you can see all of the frameworks and the controls and the integrations that we have. You can use the Slack integration in order to actually get the drift results into your Slack. So you can actually set our uh, Cubescape to continuously scale your cluster, let's say once a day. And if it, it sees something new, uh, a new vulnerability, or as you can see a de a degradation in the posture score of your cluster, it will send it to you via Slack. Now let's look at the frameworks. We can see that we have four frameworks here and we have the Shauli um, framework that I've created. I will delete it. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how I create a new framework. There are different ways to go about it, but I will just create a new framework here. I'm saying I'm gonna put the, the framework name, which is CNCF webinar. I'm gonna, uh, I can put a description. Capital letters are not allowed, of course. Uh, demo framework for the CNCF webinar with description. And then I can choose exactly which controls I wanna have in this framework. So as an example, I can check whether the cluster is internal networking enabled, I really like, as I said, the host network access. I want to make sure I'm not going to put control plane hardening. Actually, I'm, I'm going to also not do cluster internal networking because what I'm going to do, let's actually create a framework that I'm going to use in my CICD, uh, which is actually, it might, it, it's going to be smaller. It doesn't, it's, it's not going to have many, many controls in it, but it's going to be a sanity check for my developers. Every time they commit to GitHub, for example, a new YAML, it will be tested against this framework. And then we will know, and they will be alerted if they did something that is actually bad practice in our organization. So let's do that. I think that's actually a smarter way to go about it. So of course, I want to make sure that they don't put any application credentials in the configuration files, in the config maps. What else do I want to check? I want to make sure that there is no host network access, that there is no uh, container host port access. Control plane hardening is not relevant for the CICD. Also not the malicious uh, um, admission controller. I wanna make sure that they put resource policies, basically CPU and memory limits, and I can actually go and set exactly which ones I wanna have, and I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. I don't want them to allow host pass. I want to make sure they're using mutable container file systems. I don't want them to use privileged containers. And just for the sake of it, let's also do, I don't want to allow religious creation. That's it. That's going to be my framework. And this is a framework that I can now apply in the CSCD and I click on apply and that's it. I have this framework. Uh, if I go into all of the controls, you can get all of the controls with a very specific description of what each control does. And you can actually also do it from here. So you can actually click on add and add the control to um, a framework in case it's not already there. Let's, let's take an example from here. So let's say a, a Linux hardening. So no, let's do dangerous capabilities. Dangerous capabilities is basically a control that checks that dangerous capabilities are not enabled 
in uh, the containers, so in the YAML files. I'm going to click Add, Add it to the CNC webinar, and now I added it to my framework. Uh, this is a control that can be configured. Armo, by default, make sure that you don't put uh, privileges like all sysadmin, netadmin, and sys uh, ptrace into uh, enabled in your uh, containers, but you can actually change that. You can add your own, or you can actually delete some of those if you want to allow them in your organization. So that's what you do with the uh, um, um, custom framework. And now you can also use it. So if I go back, and to kubescape and i'm going to run kubescape scan framework um we call it cncf webinar okay so you can see the test that we have chosen and we can see what failed and the percentage of the score i have against this framework. And I remind, and remind you, this is a framework that I created for myself to integrate to my CICD and actually have my developers understand exactly what they're doing wrong in terms that uh, they wanted, they, they, they are having a misconfiguration in, in their YAML files. So what I'm going to talk about next is um, ba basically what we've done so far, right? And we've analyzed our results, we've seen um, how we can control drift, how we can set exceptions, how we can understand risk over time. Um, we're actually adding more capabilities like Harvard control and vulnerability scanning uh, to this uh, version. So I'm actually encouraging you to go to our GitHub and get informed uh, or go to our Discord and get informed about all the good things that we're adding there. But now let's talk about how to practically use it. So all, all we did right now until today is we just basically did uh, scans um, on an, uh, I would say, um, as you go manner. I kind of like, whenever I wanted to, I, I, ran Cube, I, I ran Cubescape and I got a result. But I want to do it in a more automated way. I want to put it either into my CI CD. So that's one way to go about it. I can integrate it to my commits or I can integrate it to my pipeline. Uh, those are, are very uh, uh, good uh, practices to do. And I can also run Cubescape in my cluster, so I can actually periodically scan my cluster to get the results. And all of that is very well, well documented on our uh, user hub and on GitHub, and I encourage you to go and, and see it there, but I'm just gonna give two examples right now. So let's start with actually getting Cubescape to run every day in my cluster. I wanna wake up in the morning, get a report on where is my uh, configuration posture today versus yesterday. In order to do that, um, where you really need to go is to our GitHub page. We have, uh, it is all documented, but if you go to examples and hand chart, you have basically a hand chart which defines exactly, um, you know, you just deploy this hand chart and you get another cron job in your cluster, which continuously runs uh, based on the scheduling that you uh, decided to do. Let's go to, do, to let's do it right now. So I'm going to clear. I already downloaded uh, the hand chart. Let's look at it. Sorry, it's under Cubescape. Okay, and I'm going to do VI samples and chart values. And what you can see is that this M chart is configured to run basically every day at midnight. Um, if you wanted to see, you can actually do it and, and get the results into your, you know, into a file or whatever you want to do, or you can connect it to our backend as, as I showed you and to see it in an ongoing manner. If you want to do that, you need to go here and put your customer ID uh, or account ID that you get uh, from uh, our uh, UI. And let me show you where you can get it. So if, if I go here and I want to add a cluster, for example, or you want to do anything like that, um, you can see that I have the account here and all I need to do is add that token to my Cubescape. 
And again, everything is very, very well documented, and I encourage you to go look at that. So we have everything set up. I have the cluster name, I have the, the customer GUI, and then just need to install this feature. Okay, so I'm going to do Helm install. Example. Ah, okay, Cubescape. I'm installing Cubescape. What is the name? Okay, that's it. From now on, this cluster will be scanned by Cubescape based on the NSA framework, in this case, uh, based on what I wrote there, and will actually do, uh, and I will be able to see every day the results and what changed in my cluster. If I'm looking at uh, how it looks like, so this is, for example, a cluster that I already have a running in an, in an ongoing manner, and you can see that I have a trend of, what, of everything that is going on here, and I can actually see and understand the state of my cluster. And you know, just for the sake of it, I also once did this, um, you know, let me see where did, where, where did I do it? Mm -hmm. I think it was here. Oh. Okay, I, I also did like a scan that is done every minute. Ah, here we go, you see this is here. So if we go here and I look at the scans, I can see that uh, this NSA, you know, not the NSA. Yeah, so the, no. Ah, okay, it's it's only two. So it's, it's not that one. Never mind. I, I once this, <laughs> did a test where I actually ran a scan every minute, and it's uh, kind of cool to see that, <laughs> but I can't find that cluster right now. That's what happens when you try to improvise in a, a live a webinar or a live recording of a webinar. So, so we covered that. We can now have a constant, um, actually, a scanning of our cluster. But now let's actually integrate it to the CICD. We remember we wanted to make sure that our um, developers are not making mistakes, and we want to help them. So, so uh, what I did to do that, and now, as I said, I want to integrate it into my GitHub Actions. Um, I created this uh, GitHub repository just for the sake of this demo. And if I want to get and, and use that, and I want to know how to integrate uh, to uh, the CICD to GitHub, uh, we, you can go to our documentation page. Let's, uh, let's go to our documentation hub, uh, the GitHub and the integration sections, GitHub Actions. And you see that all you need to do is add another file under GitHub workflows with this uh, data in it. You have the example here. I already went ahead and did that. So we have under GitHub uh, workflows. I have the scan YAML, uh, which is, uh, which is you know, basically a copy paste of the example. And what I have in this very simple you know, repository is just one YAML, uh, the front end YAML. And every time I update it, the workflow runs and Qscape runs against it. So if I'm just going to do it now, let's, let's you know, make a change to it just to have it run. Let's add uh, here a comment, hello world. Okay, and submit it. Make changes. That should trigger the workflow. And we can see that the update workload, workload is running. If I go into it, I see that there is an NSK, NSA scan running. And if I go into that, uh, the job is still running. Give it a minute. Okay, it's running. Okay, it's done. Okay. We can see that everything is done, and we can see the result of the scan YAML file. And we can see exactly uh, what's wrong. And as I said, we can actually, I did here the NSA framework. Uh, what I could have put here is the smaller framework with just the thing I want my developers to actually make sure that they're doing right. And I can actually integrate that now that it's in GitHub Action 
into the pipeline itself. I can fail the pipeline if a best practice is not holding, and I can do all kinds of things with it. So that is super, super powerful. Uh, let's just look as an, as an example. Um, for example, let's look at the um, immutable uh, container file system is passed. Uh, let's see, it's something that failed. That is interesting. Allow privilege escalation. Okay, the first one is 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 actually uh, failing, and we can see and we know and and we saw it earlier what we should do in order to fix that. Uh, we saw that in the documentation. So if you go back uh, to my code and to the front end, of course I pre-prepared it. I'm going to edit it, and I'm a developer. I know that I need to make uh, this change. So you go here and to the security context, and instead of it only a uh, two, I'm going to put false. And I'm going to click submit or commit. And the workflow will run again. Let's let it run. Okay, it's queued. Um, really, probably because of an overload. Here we go, it started. And it's done. And you know, there's no magic here. Basically, um, now the elaborate um, escalation is still failed. Ah. So what we're going to show now, um, as I said, we're going to see integration to GitHub Actions to actually have our developers check their code every time they may commit. In order to do that, I'm going to go to the GitHub um, Actions integration uh, instructions in our user hub documentation page under the integration sections. And we can see that integrating with GitHub Actions is super easy. All you need to do is add a folder GitHub workflows uh, create a file there and have this content, you know, in the file. I already went ahead and did that. So we have the GitHub workflows here. 
and have a file called scan, which has um, the exact same content uh, just copied from, uh, from the instructions. I also added the account ID so I can see what my developers are doing, and I'm running the NSA framework. Uh, I could have run the custom framework that I created, the smaller one, uh, it is super powerful because once you do that and you're in GitHub Actions, you can actually fail the commit based on the GitHub Actions. Uh, you can actually put the output uh, not only in text and actually send it to the Slack of the uh, developers who did the commit and all kinds of things like that. Uh, but for now, for this example, I'm just going to show it uh, and say just like that. So let's make a change to um, our front end YAML. This is just one YAML in this. Uh, GitHub repository. I'm going to edit it. And just for the sake of it, I'm just going to, you know, remove the comment here just to create a comment. So I created a commit. And now what happens in the action is that the GitHub action is starting to take effect. And it, it sees that the front end YAML was updated and it will start running. Started to run. We can see that it does the NSA security check. And it's going to take a few more seconds. And I can now look at it. I see that it ran. I can put it into my CICD. And I see, for example, different fails that have tested and failed, tests that have failed. And one in particular that I'm going to show you as an example is an immutable a file system. So immutable container file system, it is the best practice to make sure that the flag uh, is, is read only. And uh, this was not done by this developer. So now he sees that it failed. As I said, it can be actually sent to him in Slack and show you the Slack integration before. And now I'm going to fix it. How do I fix it? I'm going to go to the, to the documentation. Oh, I can see here that I need to add this flag. And now I'm going to go back to my YAML and make the change. Uh, of course, I already did it before, so it just commented out here. And now read on the file system is true. And I'm going to commit changes. And again, the flow is going to run. Did not start to run yet. Here we go, it started to run. And again, it's going to take a few seconds to run. Great. And if we go to the results now, we can see that the immutable container uh, file system is now passed because we have fixed the misconfiguration. And as I said, this is super, super powerful because now you can actually put it, um, and you can actually uh, make sure that the build is uh, depending on it. You can decide that it's not depending on it. It's very, very flexible for you uh, as a tool. And you can actually limit it to only the tests that you want to enforce in your CCD or that you want to know uh, that your developers are doing. So uh, that is basically, you know, if I go back here, so we talked about adding a cron job that we test every day. We talked about how you can edit to different CICD pipeline tools, and we showed it on GitHub. And that's why Cubescape is very, very powerful and covers you in many, many elements uh, of your CI/CD configuration uh, to production configuration checks. So we're done. We're feeling good with our configuration, but now what? So unfortunately, even if you continuously fight misconfigurations, you will only, we will always have some more misconfigurations in your environment. And the next things that you need to care about is really the next things in our survey: security incidents in one time vulnerability uh, and mitigation, software vulnerabilities, uh, audit logs, and those type of tools. And that's where, and that's the only thing I'm going to say about Armo, but that's where the bigger Armo enterprise version of Cubescape come into place. Um, that actually takes you not only for configurations, but also for the deployment and production and application protection. And uh, that's our wider uh, platform. We cover, you know, via Cubescape, we, call, we cover your checks early in the CI CD, uh, and then you add more functionality like continuous posture control and runtime zero trust to cover those elements that are not covered by Cubescape and other 
scanning tools. This is a core uh, runtime security that we believe you need to add to your cluster and we made it very easy for you to do that. Um, the way we work is via a zero trust model. Uh, I'm not gonna go deep into that. You know, you're welcome to connect with us, but basically we can actually apply one YAML to your namespace or cluster and immediately we protect each one of your microservices, assure only your microservices, and only as long as they're not compromised, can actually run, communicate, and access data in your environment without the hassle of so many different network and security policies, just one overarching, very deterministic policy. Uh, we have patented it, and I'd be happy to speak with anyone about it, uh, but that's for the topic of this specific webinar. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoy this webinar. I try to be as practical as I can. I really hope you do go uh, to our GitHub and follow us. And I do hope that you do uh, give us a star and join our Discord and join this community and help us make uh, Cubescape a very, very good tool for everybody to use. So thank you so much and have a great day.